What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Santosh. My name is Vivi. And I'm Mamrit. And together, we are the SPA. Ah. So? So, um, for episode 16, yes, we've done 15 episodes already. Yeah. Uh, we're going to try and change it up a little bit. So, we, what we're going to do is, uh, every week, each of us is going to share a story about mm-hmm. ourselves, our past, or maybe some, some dream that we have for the future. And uh, we're going to share that with you. And we're just going to, the other two of us are just going to pitch in and we'll give see in how our, it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Go with the flow sort of thing. Okay. So for this week, uh, in episode 16 of The Spa, it's going to be Santosh who's going to be talking about his story. Yeah. I'm going to, it's a story that I like to call um the, the lion and the boy. You know? Lion sounds and like the boy? The life of pie. Yeah. It sounds <laughs> like Lion King. I don't oh, know. Oh. It, just, it just gave me the, the impression. Or like Jungle Book, you know, like Mowgli. Yeah, yeah. And that kind. Yeah. Sure, sure it's, it's not nearly as cool. Um, the boy is this American boy. Uh, he's, he's my best friend. Okay. So um, there's a story about my best friend and a lion. Yeah? Sounds cool. Are you all ready? Wait, are you the lion? I'm not the lion. I oh, wish, okay. dude. <laughs> I'm just a regular brown boy. Um, but yeah. To, so if you guys don't know, uh, so I spent a good like four years in Africa, so specifically in Zambia. So, you know, they're... Me and our internet's not the best, and like we don't have the, the most movies to watch. So when we have when we have nothing better to do, what we do is we go out, we go go to like the game parks, the nature reserves, you know, and go find some animals, right? We go just go and appreciate God's creations, right? So this one time, right before I was gonna leave and come back here to serve NS, uh, we decided we'd go to the Zambezi River, right, and track a lion because there was a single like male lion that was roaming around. Um, in the park there, and we decided we're gonna go track it. So my, me, my best friend, his dad, and my best friend's cousin, uh, the four of us are in this vehicle that's a completely open door. So it's like a Land Rover, but it has no doors. Uh, it's got a little frame, but you're completely open to the, to the elements, elements. of uh-huh. yeah, completely yeah. open to the elements, right? So we decide we're tracking this this lion. We find its footprints maybe like two three hours into the day, and we track it for the rest of the day, and then. You know, we, we, we look and we look and we look. We find it's like dung. We find more footprints. We're like really close, right? But then it starts getting dark. And you don't want to be out in one of these game parks in the dark because yeah. um, that's when lions hunt, right? And you don't want to be out there when they're hunting. So the, gu- the guide that was with us is like, yo, um, we're going we're gonna to head back. Um, and I'm like, okay. But I really wanted to see this lion, right? And the guide's like, no, no, no it's not going to be safe. Um, we should really head back. And I said, okay, fine. Um, and my best friend said, okay, okay. Because um, at that point, it was already like a good 12 hours of the day that we were out. So we left we left camp at like 4 in the morning. Okay. And this is like 4 or 5 in the evening already. Uh-huh. So um, it's getting dark. <clears throat> it usually gets dark around 6. Okay. Um, and he's like, okay, we should head back. And my friend's like, but camp is like 4 hours away. So uh, can, can I like use the restroom real quick? And yeah. Okay. So Wait, I kind of know where this is. If you kind of yeah, <laughs> if you guys kind of know where this is going, that's exactly where this is going, right? Um, if you've ever accidentally stubbed your toe on a table, or you know hit your head against a beam, and realize that you should really pay attention to your surroundings, that is a lesson that my friend should have learned a long, long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the guide, st- stupidly, this is a guy that's paid to take care of us, right? He's He's paid to make sure that we don't do anything stupid. He's like, yeah, sure, dude. Um, I think this spot is really good. You know, we let's let's go let you pee before it gets too dark. Um, there's a bush right here. We won't even look at you. And my friend, stupidly enough, is like, yeah, sure. My friend and his dad. His dad has two PhDs, right? Works for the American <laughs> Embassy. Is one of the, probably one of the most like like top one percent of intelligent people in the world. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go pee with my son too. Yeah, so. The two of them get off the vehicle, they go behind this bush, they do their little thing, and my friend's dad walks back. So he turns around, walks back to the vehicle, and he turns back to look at his son, he's like, yo, Chris, um, hurry up, let's go. And right before he says, let's go, right, he cuts off, so he's like, yo, Chris, hurry up, let's... And he just freezes, and the rest of us like, what's going on? Um, and my friend Chris still has his hand on his zipper, and he's like looking at his dad like, what's wrong? And my friend's dad is just like... <laughs> Just walk to the car, Chris. Just just walk to the car, Chris. Walk to the car. And then my friend's like, what, what the hell's going on, right? So he just like zips up, 
kind of looks around. He doesn't see anything. And he starts, like, walking to the car. And my, my, friend's, um, my friend's dad is like, hurry up, run to the car. And Chris turns around. All of us turn and look where Chris is looking. And literally, like, 50 meters away, uh, under a tree, is this line that we've been tracking all day. Oh, right? damn. So, and there's one of those, like, I'm not even kidding. He he's he's the kind of lion that looks like Scar from Lion King. So he's got like a darker mane because uh-huh. he's like a lone lion. He's been in a lot of fights, so he's a little bit scarred. He looks a little skinny, you know, because um, he doesn't have women to hunt for him, and male lions are kind of useless. So yeah, he just kind of <laughs> like the rest of the human the human race. Um, so he just kind of like sits there, and the moment my friend turns around, he goes ah, and the lion stands up. I probably shouldn't have screamed into that, but anyways, the lion stands up. And just, like, stands there. I think my friend's gonna die. My friend's dad thinks he's gonna lose a son. My friend still, like, has half his zipper, like, still down his pants, right? And he just books it, which you're not supposed to do, okay? When the lion's there, you don't run, right? But he just books it, leaps into the car, and the guy, the whole time, wasn't doing a thing. This guy is armed. He could have done a lot. He didn't do a thing. He was just, like, freaking out because he thought he was going to lose his job. He hits the pedal and we, like, speed off, right? The line doesn't move. It just, like, stands there and stares at us. So if you guys listening out there, right, <laughs> one thing that you guys have to do, even if you're not in the African plains, just pay attention to where you are. You know, don't do something stupid, especially when you're in search of something stupid, right? So we were it's looking not, for this lion. It's not really stupid. Well, you know, it's, it's really cool thing to be looking for it is it is right rather than you know um what is that we had something earlier this year this year or last year around the smu campus um squeaky if you find the the photo of the mouse or like a gold coin or oh like the golden coin yeah thousand yeah. dollars like marketing stunts yeah dude. yeah damn i'd rather look for a lion dude, this is true you know it was very cool to look for lions. that's an opportunity a lot of people i imagine don't get uh-huh but there are a lot of things that one needs to consider when looking for a lion. That you need to realize true. that you are looking for a lion, <laughs> right? A lone lion. A lone lion, looks not like a scar. Yeah, have been in a lot of battle. <laughs> not a golden coin at SMU, right? Um, yeah, I mean, when I was in Kenya, I also uh, went for the safari drives. Ooh, nice. Yeah, but honestly, I'm not a fan of animals, and I, I don't really understand. Because everyone is, like, looking at the binoculars and then, like, really finding for yeah, the yeah. animal. And even uh, though it's so far away, and it's like, oh my god, I see a lion. Then we are like, where, 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 where? <laughs> but we don't see any uh, lion. Uh-huh. And then, uh, you're like, here, here, look here. Be in between the three, in between the three, uh, yeah. uh, five meters away, there's this lion, he's moving, that kind of thing. Okay, sorry, Sam Singlish, but... <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know. I'm mean, like, if you've ever been in the army, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know how they give you—I can't remember what it's called—but when they give you orders to shoot somewhere, you have to explain exactly where it is, how far away it is, yeah, where yeah, it yeah, is, exactly. directing RT five. Di- yeah, yeah, directing five. I, I imagine that, like, I've been on a bunch of those rides as well, and it's always like, no, no, he's there. You can see. Yeah, exactly. You can see him. I can't see anything. That's how in- yeah. that's how incredible these animals are, though. Like, this line was literally fifty meters away, and we didn't see him until like, yeah, they went to go pee. You know. Yeah. They are amazing, yeah. amazing mm. creatures. Yeah. Like, okay, male lions are, you know, quite useless when it comes to hunting because they have their pride of lionesses. No, yeah. They have lionesses in their pride. In their pride. Then the lioness is all badass. Plus, frankly, they don't have manes. So if you think about it from, like, a warrior perspective, right? Yeah. You don't have that bushy mane to block out your peripheral vision. Oh, so that's it, true, so yeah. So if you're hunting, like, a, a water buffalo, wait. A water buffalo? Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay, yeah. water buffalo, right? And then this hyena, this pack of hyenas mm. is coming you from the right. The male is gone. The male, yeah, the, the male's male not doing nothing. Gone. Yeah, he's gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna get water buffalo for dinner tonight. Then the hyenas are like, haha, no. But then my lionesses are just gonna, uh, they're just gonna be charging. Then they notice out of the corner of their eye. Then they peel off and be like, bring it. See, I mean, bring if you if you think about it, right, that's a lot like how guys react to things. You know, like if something is ahead of us, we can deal with it head on. We can sort that out. But if something we don't expect comes our way, most of the time, we're a little bit lost. I don't know if I'm speaking for the whole male population, <laughs> but I'm definitely speaking for myself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely speaking for myself. Something that comes out of the... Hmm. Okay. You know, do you think do you think men are more reactive to situations than women are? I don't know. I... I'm not. 
I'm not so sure about um, whether the gender plays a part. Well, um, upbringing, definitely. Yeah. I like how this went from lion hunting to <laughs> I know, right? lion tracking, not lion hunting, to <laughs> yeah. do this. But Would never hunt lion. Yeah, um, um, okay, I wouldn't say that it's a gender thing. Yeah. I say it's more of a how you are set up. So like upbringing and nature, how, nature. how you... Yeah. Nature, nurture, both of them, in fact. Yeah. Um, if you're the kind of person who is more proactive, then good for you. Yeah. But that also means that you might be more stressed constantly. Oh, yeah, yeah. But if you are a reactive person, you're likely to have more downtime. Oh, and for then sure. when shit yeah, hits the fan, then you're like, like oh, crap. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Then you like you panic, you freak out. At the end of the day, you'll figure something out. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of MPW recently, management of people at work. Uh-huh. And, you know, gender is one of those things that we do talk about, right? And apparently, like, there are gender norms and stuff like that. But then you always have these debates in class where it's like, no, I'm a girl, I'm not like that. I'm like, I'm a boy, I'm not like that. Uh-huh, yeah. You know? Um, I love it, dude. But yeah, see, we've gone all over the place today. But. Yeah, we have. Um, but the main point of the story is open your eyes. Know where you're going. Be aware of your surroundings. Yeah, for sure, dude. And channel your inner Phoebe and maintain a calm demeanor when two I guys know. around you are just going <laughs> off the track. Yeah, for sure. Phoebe's sitting here like, excuse me, guys. Okay, can we get back to the dang story? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, you know when I was in Kenya, I saw an like, uh, elephant oh, when no. we were in the safari uh, van. Ooh, yeah, nice. Is it a safari van? Yeah, 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 I guess. Yeah, yeah. and then the, the elephants were literally like a few meters away from us and there was a, uh, a herd. Is it a herd? Um, it's a, yeah, it's a, a herd of elephants. Yeah, a herd yeah. of elephants. They were, they were just crossing the road. Yeah. So, um, what was that word? Like, like really calmly and like, it, it just feels so good that they are so near to us and yeah. then we could literally see their texture <laughs> how, this is coming from move. the lady who um, yeah. just a few minutes earlier said I don't really like animals mm. yeah. but elephants are pretty incredible though. Yeah, I feel I like know, if you right? saw an elephant like They're in the wild creatures. It's, yeah. it's something that you just won't forget and then we saw like hippopotamus Ooh, yeah. hippos yeah. I like hippos they're big They're so cute. They open their mouths yeah. big, big. oh and then I swear, zebra's butts are like so cute. And they're beautiful, right? Right, the, the butt, the ass oh is like amazing. Yeah, it's like, it's like really huge. Forget, forget like booties, <laughs> like zebra booties are the thing to... Man! I love See, zebra's butts. I'm saying, yeah. It's like, it's like, once you see, you feel like smacking it in the guy. <laughs> I think this is what we're going to call this episode. The butt zebra, zebra butts. Zebra butts. No, but that's just the end. Okay. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's something to work towards. <laughs> yeah, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Because this is something that we're just trying out. We're just trying to, you know, tell you guys some stories. Have you guys really listen into our stories and learn maybe a thing or two. Yeah, or, or and, five. And if, uh, you know, if you like our videos, uh, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you don't like it, try not to hit the dislike button. But if you do... Please leave a comment as to why you didn't like it. And if you really liked it, leave a comment about why you liked it. And if you didn't like it, subscribe anyways. Because ideally we improve and then you guys get to enjoy something you enjoy. Precisely. Like we are creating this for all of you. Yeah. So uh, this was episode 16. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, we thank you very much for listening to us. And uh, this was SMU Campus Radio. Say, say what, what you want to say. say.